Wrecking Crew 98 has just been released for the first time ever outside of Japan, over on the Super Nintendo service on the Switch Online. Some may not have heard of the game, as it sort of remained in obscurity, but today I'm going to give an overview on just what the game is, and the objectives that's involved, so let's get right into it. Wrecking Crew 98 has just been brought over to the Switch Online service. That Japanese-only game for the Super Famicom is now playable for the first time in the States. So, what exactly is this game? Well, as somebody who has played a bit of this game before, it was brought over to the Switch Online, I do have a very basic description. Summary is that Mario finds a building after coming back from vacation. It was a secret hideout that was built by Bowser, and it was so big, it was blocking out the sunlight in the Mushroom Kingdom, causing flowers to die. And so, it was up to Mario and his magic hammer to save the day. Yep, same hammer he used for the Wrecking Crew game that is on the NES. By the way, the footage you see here comes from a fan translation of the game. And unfortunately, even the Switch Online version retains the original Japanese text. Now, this game is much different than the original Wrecking Crew. The original Wrecking Crew involves Mario destroying pillars that are on screen with each level, with some areas having bonus levels where you have to collect the coin before the game's antagonists form and spike. Wrecking Crew 98 has much more of that Tetris, uh, Match 3-like gameplay. This is more reminiscent to games like Panel Dupon, which was released in several different variations in North America, such as Tetris Attack and Pokemon Puzzle League. There is a bit of a learning curve in terms of the gameplay, as the other player can move really fast, and sometimes it can be hard to match the tiles you need, especially when you have so many stacking on onto you at once, and so many of the other bricks to break. And some things that I've learned a bit later while playing the game is that holding Y on the Super Nintendo controller allows for more pillars to drop. Not just pillars, but also bombs, which is really helpful as they're the only things that can blast the steel pillars that you cannot break with your hammer. Most of the enemies that you go up against appeared in the original Wrecking Crew, and, well, their role in this game is mostly just uh, hey, remember me from the previous game? Well, I'm back! That includes such enemies as the Eggplant Man and the Gacha Wrench, as well as the main antagonist of Wrecking Crew, which is Foreman Spike, shows up in Stage 4 and is being portrayed as being even more villainous than ever than he has been in the original Wrecking Crew. In fact, Foreman Spike is actually working for Bowser in this game, which is not something you'd expect in any other iteration of Spike, whether that's in Wrecking Crew or his appearance in the Super Mario Bros. movie. After you beat Foreman Spike, then he'll either give you the directions to Bowser's castle if you get a good time, and if you don't get a good time, then he's just gonna run off afterwards. Spike's character in this really feels like if you took Wario and Waluigi and fused them together, well, then you get Wrecking Crew 98's Foreman Spike. Also interesting is that this not only comes with Wrecking Crew 98, but you could also play the original Wrecking Crew that was on the NES. This is probably one of the only cases I know of in which an NES game was actually straight up ported over to the Super Nintendo, and not remade like in Super Mario All-Stars. And while it does retain the NES graphics, the music and sound leaves a bit to be desired. Here's a comparison between the NES and the Super NES versions.
Yeah, not a very good conversion. Personally, I would have much preferred that they gave the original Wrecking Crew a 16-bit remake as opposed to just straight up porting the NES game, as I think Wrecking Crew would have looked good with the Super Nintendo graphics. Still, Wrecking Crew 98 is a fun game to check out now that it is on the Switch Online, and it's the first that the game has ever been released outside of Japan. I have a feeling the popularity of the Super Mario Bros. movie, where Foreman Spike appears in, led to this getting a North American release, despite Foreman Spike in that game being way different. But either way, the game is fun, but also a warning, it can get a bit addictive. I find myself being a bit hooked into it. But now, what do you guys think? Are you willing to give Wrecking Crew 98 a try on the Switch Online? And do you think the Mario movie may have helped with this game giving an, getting an international release? Let me know in the comments below, and subscribe to DSL Media for more content. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.